Hi, welcome back. Uh, in the last video, we created this uh, upload image uh, route where we upload an image for the user. <laughs> in this video, we're gonna work on adding user details. Uh, I don't know if I've written this in a past video, but uh, you can take your time to uh, write or just read this. So this is our basic user, basic user info. And these are extra credentials that we could use through, um, that we could add through our uh, front end, a bio, a website, and a location. And of course they're optional. Um, so let's write a function to actually add these details. Okay, so first thing, let's go to our index file and create a route for this. And this will be a post route, so app.post. And this will point at slash user. And this will, of course, be a protected route. So let's add the middleware, fb auth. And the function will be add user details, which we haven't created yet, but we will in a moment. So let's import it, add user details. So let's go to users, save this and go to users. And here, actually, I'm gonna put it above the upload image. Let's put a comment here, um, add user details and exports dot add user details. Request response as per usual, arrow function. Let's actually put a comment on this as well, uh, upload an image, a profile, not an, a profile image for user. Let's put a comment here as well, log user in. Now I'm not writing a lot of comments because that could uh, take up some unnecessary time. You feel free to write uh, comments as you go. But I believe in if you write expressive code and you name your variables properly, whenever you write clean code, you feel like you don't need to comment it as much. But of course, sometimes commenting can be useful for other people to read your code. Okay, so let's actually write this function. So here we need to take a couple of details. And the thing is, I'm going to write right now, not a validation method or function, but it's... Um, it's a function that will take the input and make sure let's let me actually write something and then I'll explain. So let, let's say let user details uh, details equals I'm gonna write a name of a function that I haven't created yet. Reduce user details. And this will take in the request body. And oops, what did I do? Okay, semicolon right there. And let's bring in this request, no, reduce, reduce user details from validators. Let's go there and create it. So in validators at the bottom here, let's do exports dot reduce user details. It will take uh, data and here, uh, like we mentioned earlier, we need, we're going to take three things, a bio, a website, and a location. So let's do um, let user details, initiate this as an empty object. And here we're going to do one check, actually a couple of checks. Here, if not is empty, and we take in the property data, uh, remember that this data is request.body. So in body, we have our properties, bio, the is the first one, so data.bio. Of course, dot .trim to remove any white space. Um, so if is if it's not empty, then user details dot bio equals data dot bio. If it's empty, then this will not have a bio property. So here we let's do if not is empty. Um, data dot website dot trim. Uh, now here I'm, I'm gonna do something like um, like this tiny clever trick where what I want to do is that if a user submits a website like this with HTTPS or HTTP at the start, so website dot com, we're gonna save it as it is. But they, if they don't, if they just submit website dot com, we wanna add HTTP colon slash slash 
and uh, make sure that it's HTTP, not HTTPS, because if a website doesn't have SSL, uh, it will actually crash and not load anything if you do HTTPS. But a website that does, it will still allow us to use the prot protocol HTTP and we can still access it. So let's do if, uh, no, we've already done our if. There is no if here. <laughs> so user, oops, user details dot website. Uh, yeah, dot website. Actually, do we need another if? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oops. We need to check for the HTTP. So let's do if data dot website dot trim again um, dot substring. Actually, the S is minuscule. So substring, all lowercase. And here what we're going to do, substring, uh, it, it takes a substring from a string and you give it a start and an end. So the start would be zero and the end will be four. And actually, this is not a um, four here is actually the P for some reason. And it's not S. You would think that four would be in HTTPS, four would be S, but Apparently it's not this, this function behaves in a weird manner. So we compare this substring to HTTP and then, so if this is true, that means the website already has, no, actually this is, uh, we compare it. We're making sure that it's not HTTP. If it's not HTTP, that means we need to add that to the, to the website. So let's do user details dot. Now you don't have to do this, but, um, I think it makes it, um, it makes it more neat. So we add HTTP colon slash slash. And then remember this is here backticks and then dollar sign curly braces data dot website dot trim. All right. And uh, now else, else this means it has HTTP already. We just actually we don't need a curly braces here. We can just say else user details dot website equals data dot website. Um, now for the location, it's, oops, not here. So for the location, we just say if, we're gonna do the same thing as the bio, nothing fancy. Um, if, replace bio here with bio, so location. What's, why we're doing this is that we're, our front end is definitely gonna send three properties by a website and location, even though if a user doesn't send a bio, if they leave it empty, our our React app is gonna send a bio property with an empty string. So our code here makes sure that we don't actually submit a an empty string for a value of a, of a property to our database. If it's an empty string, we don't even add that key. So here we just do return user details. And this function is done. So let's save and go back to our users um, file. And we've brought that in. So where are we? We're here. Let's add user, oh boy. Okay, we're here. <laughs> Sorry about that. Okay, so here what we're gonna do is, um, we're just gonna look for the document of this user. So let's do const user document. What do we do user document? Yeah, we're actually gonna need, it's just, actually we just do dot db dot doc and backticks slash users. And remember this is a protected route, so we have access to the to the users object. So request.user.handle dot get, um, sorry, not dot get, dot update. And here it's actually as simple as just passing this user details because um, this user details will have, uh, let's say, if it has bio and a value, this will just update exactly that. So it actually works out to have an object shape like that. So here, uh, the update returns a promise. So dot then, and here we just return a message. So let's do return res.json, and the message will say details added successfully and catch if we have any error we just console dot error that error 
and we return it. So return res dot status five hundred dot json error error dot code. All right, I think this is it for this function. So let's save and test it. Let's make make sure we we saved all files, and I've already got Firebase uh, running. So if we go to Postman, and here change this route to just slash user. It's a post at slash user, and uh, yeah, I'll send. And okay, my token has expired. It expires after an hour, so we need to log in again and get a new token. So let's log in. Let's copy that token. Let's paste it here. Okay, I'll just type again. There are space token. Let's send this. Oh, actually, I need the body. What am I doing? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the thing is, like the other valid validation as well, we have to have our keys. And of course, our front end is going to make sure that we have our keys. So let's do actually an empty bio to test whether it's not submitting an empty key to the database. Let's do a website, let's call this uh, user.com to test whether it's going to add the HTTP to it. And let's do a location of London, UK. And let's send. Cool, it says details added successfully. Let's check our database. So go to our app, uh, database. Go to our user, which is user right here. Cool, we have a location and we have a website and it's added HTTP to it and we don't have a bio because it's empty. Let's try to override these details. Let's say my bio now says, hello, I am user, whatever. And I changed the website to google.com for some reason. I'm the owner of Google now. And I moved to Los Angeles, California, because why not? Uh, let's send details added successfully. And uh, we go to the database and there we go. We have the new details, google.com, uh, LA, California, and and uh, yeah, hello, I'm user. We have the bio now. Okay, cool. And if we actually add the HTTP, let's do HTTPS colon slash slash google.com and we send. There we go. So HTTPS. So it doesn't alter it right now. All right. So next thing, let's actually work. Um, let's add a route. Because the way our application is going to work is that we keep the login route minimal to reduce response time uh, so that when we log in, we only get a token. And then when we're redirected or directed to the home page, we use that token and we send a request to a different route to get all the details for our user. I'm going to copy something just to not waste time writing it from a different file. And I'm going to paste it. Actually, I'm just going to copy a part of it user details and I'll explain it in a second. So let's close this object here. So this is going to be our Redux data. This is going to be what uh, user information that we're going to hold in our Redux state in our front end application and we'll use to populate our profile with. We need credentials to show them on our profile on the right. And we need likes to actually check on the home page or on any page whether any of the posts that are listed there are liked by us and to like show a different icon if they are. If they're not, we just show the empty heart icon. All right, so we need to write a router that actually returns this data for us. And this data will have more later when we implement notifications. But for now, we're just going to get credentials and likes. You can take your time to write this if you want. All right, so let's go to index and create this route. And it's going to be an app.get at slash user as well. And it's going to be protected because we're going to use that token to get the data. And it's going to be called get uh, authenticated user or just get authenticated user. The names don't really matter as long as they make sense to you and you can remember them, it's fine. 
All right, so let's import that and let's go and create it. So in users, here underneath add user details, let's put a comment, get own user details, and let's do exports dot um, get authenticated user equals request response arrow function and here we need to um, first of all let's declare a let res data equals empty object this is the response data we're gonna start adding data to it as we go through our promise chain so first thing we need to get the user so db.doc slash users slash dollar sign curly braces again request dot user dot handle dot get dot then so here we're gonna get uh, one document so doc arrow function uh, we're gonna do a check if the document exists just in case because if you don't do this check it's gonna crash um, so doc if doc dot exists if it exists then user data uh, actually is it user data response data yeah res data we, it can be a user data let's change it actually to user data it makes more sense now that I thought of it like that <laughs> on the top on the top of my head it does make sense okay so user data dot credentials equals as simple as doc dot data and don't don't forget that this is a function so dot dot data and do curly, um, parentheses so here let's now get um, the screams of this user actually we don't need the screams we just need to get the likes which don't exist right now um, okay let's do that I don't know if it's gonna crash the app if it doesn't exist but let's try it never hurts to try something so db dot collection likes Dot where user handle we haven't even created this collection yet but let's roll with it <laughs> equals request dot user dot handle and uh, we're not gonna order this by anything because they don't have a created um, a created at so let's just do dot get then we get data and here we need to loop through this data so let's do data dot for each document um, we need to actually initialize uh, user data dot so let's do user data because if we don't it's gonna crash because it doesn't know it's it's gonna mess up with types so let's do actually not user data user data dot likes equals an empty array and here for each document we're gonna do user data dot likes dot push document dot data like this and then uh, when it's done we just return the data so when it's done here we do return response or just res dot json and we pass user data like this so of course here dot catch error the usual console dot error the error and return res dot status 500 dot json error error dot code all right let's test if this is working let's go to postman make sure you saved all your files and here with the same token we're gonna send the get request and put body as none because it's a get request with the token and let's hit send cool we get credentials and we get an empty likes array and even though that the collection doesn't exist yet it uh, returns an empty array this is how firebase works based on document references it will still have a document and it will still have a reference even though the document doesn't exist or the collection in this case doesn't exist cool so we have credentials um, so we have now a route to get user credentials all right so for now we are done with user routes so in the next video we're going to start to implement more uh, scream routes and 
uh, yeah, so look, look forward to that one. I look forward to seeing you. Thank you. Bye.